Hi, it's Roger Osborne. Welcome to my new video, How to Read a Beach for Beach Fishing. I'm showing you my eight key points that will help you to be more successful fishing off the beach. I'm going to go into more detail in future videos, such as targeting specific species of fish off the beach. So here we go. Here's key point number one, plan ahead. The reason I like to plan ahead is because I don't like to waste my time and go to all the effort and get down to the beach and find out that it's, it's pretty useless. So I would rather plan ahead so that I can choose the times that I know are really good. What I do is use some of the surfing websites available such as Magic Seaweed and Coastal Watch. When I go on, I'm mainly concerned with the wave or swell height, the strength of the wind, the wind direction and the tide. Most of these websites give you a one week forecast so you can look a week ahead. If the seas are really rough or it's very windy, it's only going to be a waste of your time. So that's one of the things I do. I'll jump on there and I'll be able to plan ahead. Then I can ring my mates and say, these days look really good. And also when you plan ahead, it actually gets you excited because you can see times that look really good for fishing and you start thinking about it and you start getting excited about having a great fishing trip. So it's really important to plan ahead, to save time and also to make sure that you're giving yourself the best opportunity when you go fishing. Key point number two is target species and bait selection. Before you go fishing, you need to decide what type of fish that you want to catch. We don't just take a random approach and go down the beach and think, well, and hope for the best, just use any old bait and cast it in any old place. When you choose your species of fish, that will influence the tackle that you use. For example, the type of fishing rod, the reel, the breaking strain of the line, the type of bait, the hooks, sinkers, or even a fluorocarbon leader. You need to decide these things before you go fishing. And that's also a lot of fun because you're planning and getting excited about your fishing trip. I like to target species like whiting, brim, flathead, mulloway, and a few others. And also it's good to mix it up and not just fish for the same type of fish all the time. You might have a favourite fish that you'd like to get good at catching and it's good to focus on that until you get your skills uh, up and you become proficient at catching that particular type of fish. So remember, decide what you want to catch before you even leave home so that when you leave home you're all set and ready to go. Key point number three is which beach do I choose? If you live on the coast or if you're on holidays somewhere, there's going to be a number of beaches that you can choose from to go fishing. So how do you choose which one to go to? The main things that influence which beach you go to are one, the weather, two, the actual beach structure uh, on those beaches at that time, and three, also your target species. Beach structure is a big one because beaches are changing all the time as the weather patterns change, as the size of the surf changes. So you actually need to go down and have a look at the beaches, have a look at the setup. You know, there might be, on a particular beach, there might be no structure at all on one beach, but then you might go to another beach and it'll have some really nice deep areas, some shallow sandbars, it'll have a lot of really good habitat for fish. So, you know, you need to actually compare beaches and have a look before you go fishing to decide which beach you want to go to. Also, if the weather is coming from a particular direction, let's say the weather's coming from the south and there's strong south winds, then you would be more inclined to fish at the south end of the beach, probably closer to the headland which is going to be protected from the wind. And the same thing also happens if you've got a weather pattern from the north, it's gonna be better up towards the north end of the beach because the further that you get down the beach, when you've got a wind blowing, you actually begin to get strong currents that sweep down the beach, which make it more difficult to fish. So you need to do a little bit of um, reconnaissance 
and looking at the structure, taking the weather in, into account and then also thinking about what type of fish that you're going to be fishing for. Key point number four is beach structure. What is beach structure? Well from the point of view at a beach it's fairly simple. There's really only a few different types of formations that are at the beach. Number one is a sandbar. A sandbar is a shallow area where the sand is built up. It's very easy to tell the sandbars because that's where the waves break. So a sandbar is actually a shallow part on the beach. And at low tide you can actually see the sandbars because when the water rushes out they become really obvious and oftentimes they're actually out of the water. Structure number two is what we call a hole or a gutter. Now quite simply, a hole or a gutter are the deep areas on a beach. Usually you have holes or gutters in between sandbars. And I guess they call a gutter a gutter is because it's like the water runs off a sandbar into a gutter like the rain runs off your roof into a gutter. And where the water runs off a sandbar, a gutter is like a drain point where the water goes back out to sea and it's like a deep trench. So you have gutters, you also have holes which are kind of not, not so much like a gutter but more of a just a deep spot. And the last thing is where you have a beach where there's no structure at all. This usually occurs after a period of very flat swell when there's been no waves. It's quite funny how that works but when there are no waves and there's just a very small lapping on the shore, all the sandbars and holes on a beach seem to just disappear and essentially you've just got one long beach with very little features. When the, um, when the beach is like that, there's really not a lot of reading of the beach to do and when you fish on a beach which is featureless, essentially you're fishing really close to the shore. The fish patrol up and down that edge because you know that's the only place where there's any action or there's a little breaking wave right on the edge of the shore so the fish swim along the edge so you can actually fish with a hand line in those conditions you can put your bait on and just flick it out because the fish generally aren't going to be too far out key point number five is how to find the fish this is the big one the sole purpose of reading a beach is to find the fish. Fish are not really complex creatures. All they're really thinking about is their next meal. So when we read a beach, we are trying to determine where the food source is for the fish. And that's where we're going to cast our bait. Key point number six is concentrated food areas. So we've already determined that the fish are going to be where their food source is. So what are the food sources on a beach that you are going to find fish? A good food source is on the edge of sandbars and drop-offs because when a wave breaks on a sandbar it stirs up the sand and reveals little crabs, crustaceans, possibly worms and different sources of food. A great place to fish is just over the edge of a sandbar into the deep water. The waves wash across the sandbar and wash any food that's being stirred up over the edge of the sandbar down into the gutter or drop off. The fish often patrol this edge looking for food. Small bait fish like mullet also like to find cover from large predatory fish in the white water on the edge of sandbars. I like to cast my line actually onto a sandbar, let it sit there for a minute and then just pull it off the edge and just let the bait sit off the edge of the sandbar. Lake entrances and river entrances are also great food sources for fish because particularly lakes you've got things like prawns, a little mullet constantly coming in and out of that area so they're a great place to fish because you've got big fish waiting in the surf for all the bait fish to swim out and all the prawns and all the goodies especially when you've got to run out tide or in summertime when it's prawning season when there's a dark and you know all the prawns are going to be running out there that's a natural place that fish would congregate and that's also a great place to fish for all species including jewfish slash mulloway which are very popular 
and obviously your brim and your whiting, your flathead, your salmon, um, etc. Another food hotspot for fish is near the headlands at either end of a beach. Because where you've got a headland and you've got rocks running out beside the sand, there's lots of bait and lots of food on the edges of those rocks. There's weed, there's little crabs, there's even like little prawns, there's all sorts of things. And that attracts fish. It attracts little fish, it attracts big fish. I actually find that that's also a good spot for whiting, even though it's next to the rocks. I've done a fair bit of spearfishing, and when I go spearfishing, I often, I've speared a lot of whiting along that rocky edge at the end of a beach, right within two or three feet of the rocks. And also, if there are whiting there, for example, at the end of a beach, there's going to be bigger fish like mulloway that would feed on whiting, on blackfish, and other small fish that are patrolling that edge between the sand and the rocks. So that's a great place to fish, is that corridor at the end of a beach next to a headland. Key point number seven is the high value of prospecting, what I call prospecting. And what I mean by prospecting is testing. Even though you've done all your research, you've looked at the beach structure, you've checked out where you're going to fish and you've chosen the place that you think looks the best, don't just throw your line in the water and leave it there. You know, you need to still be looking for the fish. So what I do when I go to a particular spot, for example, I might put in my biggest cast first and cast right out the back. And then I'll wind my line a few feet and wait. And I'll wind my line a few feet and wait. And I'm trying to locate, for example, are the fish close to shore? Are they further out? Sometimes you'll cast your line out and you'll wind your line into a particular spot. All of a sudden you'll get a bite. So what you do there Next time you cast out, you just cast straight back into that same spot. And you'll often find that that's where the fish are, and you'll just start catching fish after fish. And also, don't just cast out here. Try to the right, try to the left, walk along the beach 20 metres. If you've thrown your line out in the water, and you've been standing there for five minutes, 10 minutes, and you haven't had a bite, don't just leave it there. Keep looking until you locate where the fish are. It makes a huge difference. It can make the difference between getting a bag of fish or getting nothing. One of the best times of day is to go fishing off the beach first thing in the morning. That is, from the very first light until sunrise or just after. Probably even a better time would be the last hour before dark in the evening and then an hour after dark. The only exception that I have found is fishing in overcast or rainy weather. You can fish all day in these conditions. Generally, when the sun is up and shining brightly into the water, it's not good for fishing. I'm an all season fisherman. I don't just fish in summer. I just love to fish all year round. And if you apply the things that I've been teaching you in this video, it will certainly double, triple your success when you're fishing off the beach. So there's my eight key points on how to read a beach. I hope it's been helpful. If you've got any questions, just put them in the comments section underneath the video. And remember that no time spent beach fishing is ever a fail. You're always generally fishing with a mate, you're out in the fresh air, and you always learn something. Even the best fishermen that I know have days where they don't catch fish. So remember click subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.